Wow, 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 people, man. This is a historic shit going down in L.A., man. There's the people out there speaking and protesting. Little racist, little Latino bitch running the city council want to spew out some racist shit. And salute to the person that recorded the bitch making these remarks along with other city council members. And the people in the first session for the uh, city council following those remarks being released, the people showed up and they showed out. And uh, man, you seeing this, man. And it's not no just play around shit because there's a lot of deep racial dividing, splitting shit going on in L.A. And mainly the targets is us. So it's always great when you see the people come up and speak against this type of shit because this shit can't be allowed. And for once, black folks should never allow that shit. Should never lay off punk ass shit. And I listen to that little hoe ass motherfucker named Fred Hartong off of the barbershop conversation on YouTube, straight up fucking monkey mouth coon, speaking to acting as if it's not a major issue with the woman saying that shit. Because these are the people who set city policies. They set the zoning laws. They set the fucking uh, uh, ordinance rules and everything that's shaped for the city. Where money is invested into the city. And for a nigga to ever think some shit like that is cool, from regardless of what race that person is. Not even the black politician going there and spewing out racial ass bullshit. But this shit is historic as fuck. And then the council member whose adopted black son was the target of that speaks out. Listen to this shit he has to say. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I really, really do not want to be here today. I, I, want, I want to be home with my family right now. Uh, I, I am, but, but, but I, I want to say a few words. Um, I am still trying to wrap my head around everything that was said and everything that is happening. Uh, my husband and I are both uh, raw and angry and heartbroken and sick for our family and for Los Angeles. Um, and as an Angelino, like most Angelinos, uh, I am I am reeling from the revelations of what these people said. Trusted servants who voiced hate and bile. Public officials are supposed to call us to our highest selves. And these people stabbed us and shot us and, and cut the spirit of Los Angeles. It 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 it, it gave a beatdown to the heart and the soul of this city. But before anything else in the world, I'm a dad. And I'm, and I'm a, fuck. Uh, I, I am a dad who, I'm a, I'm a dad who loves his son in ways that words cannot capture. And I take a lot of hits, and, and hell, I know I practically invite a bunch of them. But my son? Man, that makes my soul bleed, and it makes my temper burn. And I know I'm not alone, because Los Angeles has spoken, and it feels the same way. When, uh, when, when the LA Times called me on Saturday, I was out of town, and I was away from my family. And um, the reporter summarized some of what was on the tapes. And my first instinct as a, as a father uh, was to implore them, don't run the story or at least be vague. Please say, made racist remarks about my son. But I didn't want to see the specifics in print. I didn't want him to have to hear them or, or read them someday. And I also knew that the tapes contained much more learned even more in the past couple of days, much more than the comments about my son. And as the, uh, as, as the, the white father of a black child, you, you stumble and you, and, you, and, you, and you fuck up and you, you, you try to do your, your best to be a parent and an ally. And 
I get it wrong a lot, I get it right sometimes. I, I knew that I did not want this story about virulent anti-black racism to be centered on an angry white dad. Uh, and you know, I was afraid this was gonna be in a California section. It's been an international news. You know, th th these words, they cut uh, and, 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 and they stung. Um, you know, I know that I can never really know or comprehend or feel the, the weight of the, 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 the daily relentless racism, anti-black racism that my son is gonna face. But man, I know the fire that you feel when someone tries to destroy black boy joy. Man, uh, it's a rage. And you know, my husband and I were both raised at a time when as gay men, we didn't think that we would be married or that we would be allowed to have kids or that we'd be allowed to have a family uh, because our relationships and our families were considered illegitimate. And a lot of what on these tapes stung. Uh, but over the past two days, I've heard about a lot more than, 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 than me and my family. I've heard about attacks on the Oaxacanio community. Uh, I've heard the homophobic tropes. Uh, I've heard anti-Semitic remarks. Uh, I've heard uh, uh, in, in, incredible coordinated efforts to disenfranchise blacks and renters and to weaken the, the voice of, of progressives. And, and to undermine anyone who tries to do coalition building. And it, it's overwhelming and uh, I, I am outraged and, and I'm, I'm sickened by it. Now, there's, there, there are a lot of people who are now asking for forgiveness. And, and a asking for forgiveness is a good first step, but, well, it's a second step, because first, first, you must resign and then ask for forgiveness. But, but, but let me be clear, um, people should not ask me for forgiveness, because, um, I, I, I can't forgive them because it's not my prerogative. Uh, it's the prerogative of a boy who is <clears throat> too young to really understand what the hell is going on. And when he's older, maybe when he's in high school, you can seek his forgiveness. Um, in the meantime, people that, 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 that love him are gonna try to help him understand when a schoolmate mentions something, or when a well-meaning stranger approaches us on the street to say how horrified they are by what happened, or, and it kills us to know this is gonna happen a lot sooner than, than we like, when he does a Google search and he reads the actual words that were said. You know, and it's not my place to forgive the slurs and, and the treatment of the Oaxacanio community or the API community or the Jewish community. It's not my place to forgive the coded comments against the gay community or forgive the overwhelming, casual, joyful, anti-black raceness of the entire conversation. And it's not my place to forgive that coordinated effort to disenfranchise all these communities and, and all these people. Now, don't get me wrong, I, 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 I want I, I, I want to be able to forgive the offenses against me and my family, and I, I want to lead with, with love and uh, generosity and, and model the world we need to create, and I promise you I'll try. But uh, to do so, first today I need to focus on love. I need to focus my mind and my heart and my family's attention 
on all those who have shown kindness and love to my, my wounded and hurting family. Uh, I, I especially want to thank Marquise and Isaac Bryan um, and Karen Bass and Melina Abdullah and all of the parents of, of, of black and brown babies who have reached out with a focus not on me, but on my son. Uh, and I want to thank all of the other LGBTQT parents who reached out. Those people know how to put families first. Uh, I want to thank Mayor Garcetti and, and Nithya and Aeonissis and Ugo for their friendship and for their love and for their moral support. It has meant more than I can say, uh, but from so many others, literally thousands of people from around the world. And I want to thank everybody who has reacted with fury and, and indignation. Um, I, I am, on these tapes, I have heard the worst of what Los Angeles is. From you, I am hearing and I'm seeing what the best of Los Angeles is. Uh, th this city is strong and this city has a very big heart. And Los Angeles is gonna heal. Uh, we can be, we can be, we can be, with a lot of work, a city where our reality matches our aspirations. We need to be a city that doesn't just issue a statement of indignation over something like this, but does the work to make sure that no little black boy, no young Latina, no kid anywhere hears this, and that no community feels disenfranchised and disempowered. Uh, I'm almost done. Um, that, 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 that work, that work uh, is never done. And it is always, always renewing. It's, it's, it's daily. Uh, there was moments with the Tom Bradley Coalition where that was real. There were moments in the, in the, the multiracial coalition that elected Antonio Villaraigosa where that promise was there. Uh, uh, in, 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 in Karen and in Marquise and in Nithya and in, in Eunices and in Isaac and in Ugo, I see the incredible promise of that coming in Los Angeles, a, a, a powerful, heart-led, multiracial crop of young progressives who are determined to build coalitions. The power is there and the heart is there and the fortitude is there. And I, I have more than hope in, 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 in the pain and all of this. I have more than hope. I have, I have faith that that can happen. Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning and welcome to your Los Angeles City Council. There are a lot of people here that need to be 